Who the hell is that? That's an ostrich. Oh no. Yes, indeed. One of the great things about making a movie called Jumanji the next level is taking everything to the next level. So we definitely had to up the action sequences. What a magnificent creature. We should get out of here. The ostriches and the dunes was one of our first ideas about action for this movie. We got a very early jump on starting to design and pre those sequences before there was even a script. There's one more thing about ostriches. Oh no. They travel in herds. There was so many facets that had to come together to make it work. We gotta get out of here! We are in the desert dunes. The scope and the scale, it's epic. We brought in Wade Eastwood to oversee the second unit of photography because we knew we wanted the sequence to be massive and exciting and frightening. Like you had to feel the danger and you had to feel the speed of the whole thing. In this Jumanji world, we have to rely on elements of CG, obviously, but I try and bring as much practical action as I can to this. Some of the biggest sand dunes in America are a little bit east of San Diego, along the border. Hundreds of miles of sand dunes. We all went out there and we got a little lesson in dune bugging and we just built a whole little dune buggy park out there. And they just went to town. Three, two, one, action! To have those dunes on your doorstep in California, they get overlooked a lot. I mean, it's incredible. The sort of land just ends. It just becomes a sea of sand dunes. That sequence has a tremendous amount of real stuff in it. They're real people, they're really in the desert, they're really racing those cars around, and I think that it has that kind of visceral reality to it that you can only get by actually going out there and racing cars around. It just feels true. Just because of the schedule, we had to shoot main unit in Hawaii. So we shipped over these dune buggies, we shipped over these great rigs that move them around and then we shot them in front of blue screen. And so when you watch the sequence, you have to realize that going between second unit footage of them driving in a dune buggy to suddenly them in the dune buggy driving and moving around and talking, that's in a blue screen set in Hawaii. Birds, 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 birds! birds! Another interesting thing about the ostrich. Get out of here! I'm not a fan of ostriches at all, and I love all animals. I said scram, you stupid bird! When threatened, they attack. Oh! 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 Growing up in South Africa, we were one of them. <laughs> Scared me half to death, so it was like, as long as we didn't have to have any real ones, I was fine doing that sequence. When we started prep, we found some people in Georgia that had ostriches, and we went and visited them. You realize very quickly, you don't hang out with ostriches. There's this long process of figuring out how it works with the ostriches and how to incorporate that and make it feel like they're really there and build them into the sequence. Real world ostriches can run about 40 miles per hour. Our ostriches are gonna probably break at 50, 55, just to catch up with the buggies and make it exciting and dynamic. These are Jumanji ostriches, so they can always be that little bit quicker and more special, leap that little bit further. What we're asking of our digital animals in this movie is much more demanding. That work is really challenging, and there are so many people working on it to make it convincing. The animation director will start formulating that into some tests, and so they'll start building in the computer volumes around the skeleton, and then they tack on the muscles that move an ostrich around. And then they sort of wrap skin around that. That is what makes animals look real. That's one of the key things that you need when you're putting an animal together. Beat it! What do we do, what do we do? I have the very fortunate position of being able to make outrageous 
requests that then a team of geniuses all over the world has to figure out how to actually execute. And on this movie, we had an absolutely staggeringly great group of people working on animals. Ah, suckers! Way to shooting, the driving sequences. Some of this stuff is obviously being built in a computer because it doesn't exist. And then there's this other part of it that is super critical that has to happen at the same time, which is Jake telling an exciting story. And it's this incredible balancing act. And it all comes from Jake's brain. So I just stand back and say thank you sometimes. We're not going to make it. We're going to make it. One of our hardest sequences in the movie was the bridge sequence. So we have to get across this. The bridges are a sequence that we started to develop for the first movie. So that's an idea that had been in our heads and something we'd been talking about for quite a while. It's just about finding the right timing. Come on, come on, come on. It's a very complicated sequence to do. We always loved it, but it just fit better in this story. The idea of hundreds of floating bridges with actors running around on them seemed extremely challenging and like it was going to be a neat little engineering project to work out, which made me extremely excited. Bridges are by far the most complicated thing in the movie to execute. The action sequence is just really spectacular. When I first read it, the idea of just hundreds of rope bridges floating through space kind of came at me like, okay, how in the world are we going to get all these bridges floating around on a soundstage, as I assume that's where we would be filming most of it. Those kind of sets are really tricky to do because, one, you can't really go over ravines with, like, wild mandrel monkeys attacking you. But we had to give them enough to work on, so the best thing to do on that was to build a series of bridges in different sizes and shapes and configurations. Yeah! We had to kind of make short ones and long ones and then ones that would intersect with each other, but they kind of float in the sky, and we don't have to explain how they go up and down. This is a video game world. See? It's no big deal. Once we came up with the design, we worked backwards from there to figure out how much weight we could hang from the ceilings and make every shot work. It was actually the first stuff that we shot. So as soon as the actors got to Atlanta, the first thing we did was put them on wooden bridges and tell them to start screaming at guys dressed in blue screen. My first day here, they had me up on a rope. I was like swinging. We pushed all the characters and it's much harder and much further, especially with practical action. We managed to do all the jumps, the transitions and everything practically. As you pass them, yeah. we just got this like. The monkey bridge was something I was really nervous about because it was this big stunt where there was a giant mandrel that had to pick me up, spin me around and throw me off of the edge of the bridge. And I remember thinking, there is no world in which I do this. And then just cut to me screaming in terror and it was happening and I did it. <laughs> oh, freaking hell. I have to give Karen a shout because when we did that sequence, she was scared five feet off the ground, and that's all Karen doing it. That's going to be good. You. It's really hard to shut off that caution part of your brain because it's quite a useful tool to stop you, you know, dying, but <laughs> um, it's quite satisfying to overcome things like that. Come on! I got you! No! Spread some! I always want to challenge myself, and I think that this movie challenged me in a way that wasn't so much that it was so difficult. It was that I never thought that I could do stuff that this character is doing. It's a lot. It's an interesting day. She'd never really done action before, but she just was like, yep, I trust you, let's go. And she just ran. She just committed from the first take 100%. Yeah, I pulled it off. When you're reading it on paper, you're just like, what? Like, that's just crazy. But everyone on this crew knows exactly what they're doing. Everything on that page became real. Go, 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 go. Oh. They were tiring days because you're acting with things that you can't see that aren't there. But our director is so good with painting these visuals. There's a lot of me standing there with the microphone saying, and it's looking at you and it jumps. He's like, and then you guys are going to run and the mandrels pop out. And they're like, ah. It's the funniest shit that I've ever seen. It's funny because <laughs> 
when you're doing stunts, sometimes you feel cool, but then other times you're just like, this can't be cool. Like, this, like I can't be selling this. But then they make it look cool. They all did great. Yeah, they all did great. It's hard to watch them all because they just make you laugh nonstop. You know, everything. So I'm gonna go. Uh, no, I'm gonna go. <laughs> to trust everyone around me, believing in me, and then to believe in myself, and then to actually execute it, it makes me feel really good. Hey, you guys, is that rock moving? These mandrels, which are these enormous monkeys with these brightly colored faces, were sort of the perfect, terrifying threat for our heroes as they try to traverse these very video game-like moving wooden bridges. Those mandrels are like nothing you've ever seen. They're angry, they're vicious, they're colorful. We use Weather Digital down in New Zealand, and their team was fantastic from start to finish. Their expertise in this area brought an awful lot of confidence for Jake, and they also brought ideas to the mix on how to really amp things up. Nobody creates monkeys better than Weather. The CG creatures, there's this push-pull, like how close can we get to the face? How believable is it gonna be? There's this thing in visual effects called the Uncanny Valley where as you get closer to reality, it starts to fall apart. And Weta have definitely crossed that valley very strongly and can produce animals that you just believe. So what you end up with is an absolutely photoreal version of how it would be if 400 mandrels were running across bridges, you get the real flex and dynamics. When we first watched that, it looked amazing. You shoot the sequence and the visual effects guys are doing their thing. And then there's that moment where they start to render these creatures and it starts to like really, really get good and realistic and lifelike. And that's kind of mind blowing. It takes the movie up a whole other level because it looks amazing. We went into this knowing that the pressure was on and we got to raise the bar. It's Jumanji, so when it's Jumanji, it commands us. And you're really working on it every day that you're making the movie for like a year and a half. And I've come to just love doing that. It's something that I didn't realize I would love as much as I do, but it's been great fun.